Hello and welcome to another tutorial by me, Amster Hill. This one is going to be on how to make a skybox. We're going to do one for daytime and nighttime. So, um, we'll start off by setting up a scene. Um, just because the clouds and stuff, they, they look quite bad on their own. So, um, first we'll grab our cube, um, press Z to constrain it across the Z axis, and hold control, and just jump it up one square so that it's sitting on the the line um, the red line for the x-axis then go back to top view and press space add mesh plane and just scale it up to about six times its original size something like that um, then what you want to do is you want to select the camera and go to camera view which is zero and you want to press G and then Z to grab it and move it down, um, just move it down enough so that it's sort of about eye level with the top of the um, the cube. And then what you want to do is you want to press R to rotate our camera. And we want to rotate it across its x-axis. So if you press X twice, it rotates the camera on its x-axis, which is great for keeping the camera level, but still. Um, being able to manipulate it in all good different directions and stuff. So just put it so that you can see sort of just touching just so you can see the um the cube and the sky. Um how you can tell where you can see is that first dotted line on the inside. Um that shows you what will come up in the render. The purple line shows you the camera selected, basically. But that inside, that first um, line shows you, the first dotted line shows you what you will see in a render. Um, so I think that looks pretty good. And um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our shaders button panel and go to world button. Now you can do this with anything selected, but it automatically comes up when you select the camera. So that makes it kind of easier. Um, now for our skybox, that's pretty much just the background. Um, so what it does is after it's rendered everything in the scene it'll put whatever you make the background look like in the background. Um, now at the moment we've got that dark blue color which is default. Um, but there's a few different settings here that you can use to change things like that. So um, we can turn on this blend thing and I'll change, you can change the color of the render to something like lighter blue maybe. Um, and if you turn on the blend thing, it blends from this first color here to the second color here. So say if we wanted to blend from red to blue, you can see it blends from red to blue. And that's what would be in our background. But um, as you can see, if we render, um, no matter what direction we face, always be red at the very top of our screen and blue at the very bottom of your scene, uh, screen which um, is okay if it's just for a background like just for showing off a model or something like that but if you were to um, have that in a scene like you want to have a realistic scene of a um, I don't know a, far, um, a city or something and you had say blue up the top and you know, purple down the bottom for a sunset, and then you looked up, it would have purple on the bottom no matter what, and it would look pretty stupid. Um, so yeah, and even if you were to rotate the camera, blue would still be at the bottom of the screen. It's just sort of like they paste on a piece of paper on the back. Um, so if you wanted to make it so it looked more real, so that the colors sort of stayed where they were, and when you move the camera, you can... Yeah. Um, you click real down here and what that does is it makes it look more like a um, horizon so blue would be all around in a circle on the flat plane kind of thing and um, red would be at the very top and at the very bottom and then it blends between them so it's sort of like having a sphere around you with um, blue in the middle and then it fades up to red and fades down to red um, so yeah, so that makes things look a little better if you're trying to go for a bit more realism and stuff. Um, and yeah, so um, now what we're going to do is we're going to make our skybox, because 
I've explained most of the functions here. So to do that, we're going to turn off these things, and we're going to put it back to our dark blue color. And we're going to go in here, and we're going to add a new texture. Then what you want to do is you want to go into texture buttons, and you want to um, change the type to clouds, because clouds is good for clouds. Um, then what you want to do is you want to set up the noise size a bit, and set up the noise depth a bit. Then go to colors, and you want to set the contrast up to about 3 or something. Then you want to set the brightness down. And what that does is it makes the clouds more sparse and more spread out and stuff because um, sort of for a, a, a sunny day kind of like you don't want to have huge amounts of clouds. You want to have sort of little dinky clouds everywhere. Um, so yeah, so go back to our um, world buttons and you want to go click map to and click horizon and then you want to click down here and change the color to white because clouds are white and if we have a look over here in our preview we can see clouds um, so now if we were to render this you can see we have clouds um, this looks pretty good for most sort of daytime renders and stuff like that but for night time, you want to have something completely different. Um, so, I'm, I'm going to show you how to do a nighttime one as well. Uh, to do that, we're going to go back here to texture and inputs, and we're going to click clear, and that will delete our texture because we don't want clouds in this one. Uh, then click here, and you want to click black so that we have our background color is black like nighttime is. And then you want to click stars and turn them on and um, so that'll mean that you can see stars and stuff in the background and then if we were to press F12 to render you can see we have stars and instantly this it makes the scene look completely different um, the stars are really good they look really cool when you're making an animation and stuff because they have like depth to them and stuff so some of them will move faster than others when you're rotating the camera and um, it all it looks quite nice. Um, so yeah, that is it for this tutorial. Um, I hope you learned something. And if you have any comments or any ideas for my next tutorial, then feel free to put them in the comments box on um, YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, also, if you can subscribe if you want. That way, you know when my next tutorial is out. And um, yeah, um, thanks for watching.